Hey folks, we have Robonaut 1 back now and we waited patiently. You have no idea how hard it was not to rip this thing open and look for the pictures considering what we're attempting. But we wanted to be able to show you the condition of Robonaut 1 and I'm going to start with the balloon nub. Here's what's left of our balloon. Completely destroyed and shattered. We're hoping we got this on video uh, it, of it exploding, but uh, this is what's left of the balloon. We found this uh, sitting right next to, to uh, Robonaut 1. And although that is destroyed, this looks like it's brand new. In fact, we're probably going to fly the chute again because it's in absolute mint condition, with the exception of a little bit of dirt on it uh, from the impact, but not even much there at all. So, uh, reusable chute. Uh, a little bit of fraying here, but not too bad. Um, but, but we do, uh, we do uh, want to look at that. We might not fly that again. And of course, my phone's blowing up, so let me uh, silence that. Here's the task at hand. Robonaut 1, guys, look at it. It basically looks like it never went to the edge of space. This is incredible. I mean, it doesn't look like it got hurt at all. So we're going to open it up now. And to do that, we're going to need to take the cameras off. We haven't opened these things yet, guys, so this, you're seeing it live here for the first time. So we're going to go ahead and take this camera off. And I'm really pleased with the GoPro uh, Motorsport mounts and our sponsor, Sky Sailing, for getting us these cameras. Um, I was thinking about super gluing these, but as it turns out, as you can hear, they're very stout. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how the videos turned out with that. And so here's our video camera where we're looking out to see if we could get discovery. We'll take this one off. This camera here was taking time pictures by the one, by the way, the one I took off. It was taking a picture uh, every five seconds. Okay, so this guy comes off. There's camera number two. And we're going to go ahead and take off camera number three. And this was the camera looking up at the balloon. Now, I want to note something. Uh, when we got it in the car, uh, this camera was looking down like this. What we think is that during free fall, because the, t the mount on it was not fully tight, uh, the centrifugal force pulled it up. So uh, in a sense, we were able to change our views during uh, free fall, so you could actually see over the side. So this should be interesting. We're going to take this guy and undo him. A little tougher to get to this one. And we're actually going to take these knobs off uh, on future kits, A, for weight, B, uh, because they're just a lot easier to take a screw and a screwdriver and go ahead and tighten them up. Like I said, this gets really difficult, so there we go. All right, and so now the moment of truth, what's going on inside? So let's take these off. Once again, these mounts, incredible. We even had the rigging line uh, yank it out of our hand at launch, and it these things were rock solid. So thanks, GoPro, for excellent cameras. All right, so here we go, the moment of truth. And right here, opening for the first time, as you see, we have the business card from Terry Carroll that we put on board, a personal friend of mine, and uh, inspired me to, to go after uh, inspiring kids themselves. So uh, there's Terry. And here's a picture of the Lynx suborbital vehicle they're building. A very, very cool thing to take people up to the edge of space. And now, we're going to go ahead and open up. And the first thing we see is the Motorola i290, the ham transmitter, uh, field rigging tape, nothing like it. We'll go ahead and disconnect. By the way, this is still warm, and if we look here, we still have a green light. Almost 24 hours later, we are still transmitting our position. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect the power supply. First time it's been disconnected since we flew. Go ahead and take this stuff off and put it down there. And we'll gently lift this up and disconnect the antenna. Very, very warm. This provided some heat, uh, some warmth inside the box. We'll go ahead and pull the antenna out very carefully to preserve it. By the way, we do auction off some of these items, uh, like the parachute. Uh, we may do that, so if you're interested in that, let us know. And as you can see now, the blue LiPo battery, we'll go ahead and pull out. And John and I were talking about how this would be expanded and maybe warped. John, I don't see that. A uh, little marketing plug here for blue LiPo. We've tried many batteries. These batteries rock. We started with an 18.5. We decided that 14.8 volts, was, if it's good enough for a monster truck RC car, it's good enough for us. And now, 
We're going to remove all the inside lining and get right down to the droids. The droids, the covers were removed for weight and they were taped for, uh, to keep the heat in. You notice that stayed, so we're going to go ahead and remove this. And there is the CDO 2600 milliamp hour uh, extended battery that lasted the whole flight, we hope. That was an upgrade for the flight. Here's the droid that was providing tracking, and let's take a moment on this. The GPS track we had from this phone, the chipset on it is outstanding. We were within 5 to 10 feet of where we needed to be. Uh, John and I were amazed when we got there. It was exactly where it said it would be. This is much like Droid 1. When the San Gregorio search and rescue team found Droid 1, they used the same chipset in the Droid 1. So there's that droid. And then the final piece is the Canon uh, SD780IS, which was taking high definition video looking straight down. As you notice, all of these things are dead. No battery power left. So we're going to sign off now. We're going to go ahead and post this, and I bet you can figure out what we're doing next.